Rapid for New Jersey for game two of our East Regional Doubleheader. It's the surprising Spiders of Richmond against the top-ranked Temple Isles. And let's show you how the two teams got here because Duke has already advanced with a one-point win over Rhode Island. And we'll play the winner of this game for a ticket to Kansas City. It's Temple and Richmond. And hi again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt along with Bill Raftery. And Bill, when you look at Temple, what do you think of? Well, the zone, obviously, the matchup, how they help one another. And it can be confusing. And underneath, Ramon Rivas keys it for them. Richmond, an obvious Cinderella team. They upset the defending national champion, went on after Indiana and took on Georgia Tech and defeated the Yellow Jackets. On a roll, though, quite very similar to Temple, but they mix it up a little more. Fox and one, one, two, 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 three. So you'll see a lot of changes by Dick Tarrant. No contrast of styles here. The two teams seem to mirror each other in the starting lineups. Big, strong lineup. Peter Wolfick, 6'5", 230-pound senior out of Richmond. And he's in that front line along with Scott Stapleton, 6'4", 175. Kratzer, 6'8", 220. And then you've got Rodney Rice and Mike Winecki up front for the Richmond Spiders. For Temple, it's Perry, Rieswick, Rebus, Howard Evans, and the superstar, Mark Macon. Macon, six foot five, 185 pound freshman from Saginaw, Michigan. He'll be 19 years old in three weeks. Considered to be one of the top 15 high school players in the nation last year. Now he's the number one freshman in the country. The last meeting, Temple won. And the Owls control the tap. This is Breezewick. Macon for three, rebound Richmond. Well, they have the green light, Macon and Breezewick. Well, two things to watch early here. Ken Atkinson, a marvelous ball hander, number 10. And then Rodney Rice, a three-point shooter who is spectacular from three-point range. If he hits early, look out. You'll see Richmond overload and look to get it down on the box. Zone defense by Temple. This is for three. Rebound inside by Wolfe. Oh, he had it blocked away by Perry. He can get up, stays on the floor to the last possible moment. A box of one, Tim. They started in the box of one. Yeah. This is Perry. Nice little spin move, and he hits. Atkinson pushes it up quickly. Now pulls it back out. Looks to the bench for a call, and it says flood. Which means to me they're going to overload the right side of that zone. You got it. He has to start out well. That he, one for two. His confidence seems to rise as he shoots well early. Rodney was that way in high school at St. John's High School in Washington, coached by Joe Gallagher. Streak shooter. When he gets hot, he can really light him up. If he struggles early, he struggles for a long time. Macon, Evans to breeze with. Number one team in the nation, number one seed in the East. Richmond, the 13th seed in the East. Here's the matchup zone now. Look at Rebus, hold on. Rebus, he's a load, and he walks. That's a problem down there, the weak side rebounding. Richmond's guards have to go down and screed off that big guy. Unbelievable size and talent as well. Rebus, 6'10", 250-pound senior. The program says he's 250 pounds. <laughs> You'd have to buy, I'd like to buy a steak from the person that put that in there. And there's another wide body. Wolfock, Wolfock. Tough shot. Great use of the glass. You'll see it all night. The Spiders have the early lead, 4-2. How about this? Villanova upsets Kentucky and moves on. And the game we had here, Duke beat Rhode Island by one. 2-3. Inside the Rivas. Great strength. Kratzer works real hard to get in front, but it's a uh, dollar toll to get around Rivas. Kratzer 6'8 and thin. Rivas, he's 250 pounds, they say. Looks like more. Overload, ball movement. Nice, nice, nice. pass to Wolfick inside, and he walked. That's a nice set, though. The high low dump down. Dick Tarrant, of course, home here in New Jersey. The officials tonight, referee Ed Hightower out of the Big Ten, the umpire Max Chauvin out of the SEC, and Tom Rucker out of the Big Ten. Breezewood for three. He just keeps plugging along. John Chaney 
feels it's up to his players to make decisions. The winner of this game moves on and plays Duke on Saturday for the championship of the East and a ticket to Kansas City. The loser goes home. For an early summer, huh? But the communication in this zone is so impressive. They trade people off. They're always talking. It's five against one is the philosophy. And they got Ramon Rivas away from home. Good, quick first step by Stapleton on the baseline. And for Rivas, that's his first personal. John Cheney really emotes in the game. You see the lack of foot speed, really, to be out that far from the hoop. And that's the side they'll like to attack if they can. Making with the steal. This is Evans. He was on the sideline, but a, he touched. Great reaction by Mark Macon. Touched the sideline. They'll bring it back. Scott Stapleton never even moved. He stayed out of bounds, just wanted the ball back to throw it in. <laughs> you mentioned how they look so much like one another, these two clubs. Temple with a better amount of talent, I feel. But they are some great step in. Macon. the Temple Rooters going. Good reaction, of course, the great ability at the other end. And the shot by Ken Atkinson. John Cheney was very impressed with Atkinson. He's the key in the direction of this team, he said at the press conference. Now's lead by two. One, two, two match now. now this is the one the weak side rebounding is a problem. We've got Atkinson who has to go down, and of course Rodney Rice. Reese went for three. Oh. You've got to tag him. He's two for two from that range. Got to stay near him though. 82ZS is the play that Richmond is calling. I have no clue too, what that means. Too many numbers for me. It's a high-low set. Wolfick is fouled. The shot goes. And is this on Rebus too? Number two. Now, don't forget, the only fellow to foul out all year of the starters is Mark Macon. And that was against Lehigh in the NCAA tournament. Now, Dick Tarrant was telling us yesterday that if he could get the big men in foul trouble, he thought he had a great shot because he doesn't know how deep their bench is. And now they come in with Dwayne Coswell, who has fouled out three times. So the sub is the one that has problems. But it's a difficult situation that John, I think, upset at the first one more than that one. So Rebas sits down with two. Coswell comes in. And Peter Wolfuck at the line. He's a 59% free throw shooter. Good hustle for the ball. Rodney Rice gets it back over to Atkinson. Now, Richmond, according to Dick Tarrant, will run some man-to-man -man stuff as well. Do a lot of overloads, kick the ball, try and pin people as they kick it. By that, the post people will hold off. A reminder that some of you will be leaving this ball game to see the Oklahoma-Louisville game. And we will keep you updated on everything that happens here at the Meadowlands. And right now, a tie up in the possession arrow points to Richmond. So with 14.38 remaining in the first okay. half, Temple leads 12-9. See how these two teams got here. Richmond by beating the defending national champion and moving on against Georgia Tech and knocking the Yellow Jackets out. Temple over Lehigh and then Georgetown. Georgetown's worst loss ever in the NCAA. Scott Stapleton gives it up to Atkinson. This is Rodney Rice. Wolfert with a big rebound. Gets it to Kratzer and throws it away. Richmond, seventh in the nation in three-point shooting. Well, in analyzing both defenses, Tim, you've got to do a lot of things to beat. You've got to switch the offense. You've got to overload, screen the back of the zone, penetrate from the point, ball movement, and you've got to change it all the time. Not easy. Of course, Atkinson and Evans are pretty good guys to do it for you. This is Perry inside. Kicks it back out to Evans, who shoots for three. Delay a game in a sense, second time. No technical now, they'll give him a warning this time. Stay off the basketball after a basketball. 
two of the players got involved in an altercation just saying leave the ball alone what a magnificent job John has done at Shady State as well I think everybody in coaching knew that he had the ability he just got a chance at the division one level and of course with it the accolades and recognition they say John Cheney is a communicator and according to other coaches he's a great tactician there's a little problem communicating with John Clockerty, the referee, huh? <laughs> Billy uh, Packer had a few comments, but as the reach in by Coswell, and to finish the thought, that wasn't the first time. You know, that happened in Las Vegas where John stared an official down, and Whoopi Goldberg was in attendance and went into the locker room after to see if John could teach her the stare and she could put it direct. <laughs> what does he call it? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, one-eyed Jack, and he's got all these different terms that he uses. He got after sportscasters a little bit in his press conference yesterday. I don't think he meant that style. Obviously not. We didn't take any offense. <laughs> Again, the ball reversal that time, not good reaction. Atkinson, Atkinson pulls Richmond within three. Now the corner jumper is open if you hold the guy off inside, but that's the one Karen likes to give up. Not that one. Quick move by Macon. Can't get it. Rebound. Out of bounds. It'll be Richmond ball. Good screen off led that open lane for Mark Macon. This is a tournament-tested Richmond team. They've won the last three tournaments they've played in. Field goal percentage not good right now for the Spiders. They're not the first Colonial Conference team in the, the finals here either, you know. Sweet 16. Navy with David Robinson. Nice pass to Wolfolk who converts on a little jumper. Wolfolk now with six points. He's out of the blocks quickly, as is Breezewood for Temple with six. They bend you into a two-three. Breezewood again for three. This one off the front of the rim, fight for the rebound. Wolfolk. Because they won't push it off a rebound. They'll walk it up. One thing Terrence said that I thought was interesting, Temple is the kind of team he doesn't have to change anything for. They play his style. It's not like playing Oklahoma, but you've got to bring them back to you. Wide open, Kratzik will take it. The middle of that zone has been open. Look at this. Wolfo will take it. Great rebound. Picking, huh? Just reached down, snapped it. Tim Perry. Making with that explosive first step. Not a good one. Boy, he threw up a rocket. But the coaches, I was talking to Jim Maloney, they don't get upset because they expect them to learn to make the decisions. They have the green light. Making one for four to start this ball game. They got steps, yeah. Kratzer was so free, he didn't realize it. 11.33 remaining first half. 15-14 Temple. Second chance points, Richmond, four zip. They missed some long ones, and they've been able to run down the rebound. Inside out, that's how you get your three-pointers anymore. Dump it in, and then they kick it back out as the defense reacts. The guards take those first three steps that are penetrating, kick it back out, and try to get that open man, as you said. It's Evans for three, his shot is short. Kratzer with a big rebound off his foot. And it'll be Temple ball. Now, Kratzer didn't deserve that rebound. Perry was closer. But that's what Richmond does. They go after it. I mean, they go three, four feet to get rebounds. Not necessarily high, but aggressive. This is Evans now. And he'll reset that offense for Temple. Kratzer's whistle for the foul. Got there a little late. Now, they try and step up the lane. And you might see an alley-oop eventually. Kratzer tries to step up here, gets caught behind. Now he's dead. See the gamble? He really should have taken the inside instead of the outside because he's drop steps to the basket. Mike Winicki comes into the ball game for Richmond. Kratzer sits down. That makes it 17-14 now. Atkinson will push it up quickly. Boy, when Wolfhook sets a pick, you're picked. And he wipes out the whole baseline. Rebound. 
They got away with it there. Atkinson fires, has it blocked, and gets it back. Tim Curry came from the foul line. Now that's foot speed. Temple mixes up the offense. Or mixes up the defense, rather. We're tied at 17, 9.55 remaining first half. Atkinson now three or four from three-point range for Richmond. How important that is, Tim, to freeze the zone out. It'll open up the middle more. Well, they are really going after Breezewick now. Breezewick had been sitting on that left elbow. Now he goes back over to that side, fires for two. And Curry should get an assist. They occupy, he occupied so many people. Left Breezewick all along. Temple's in what looks like a zone. It's a matchup, but they will go through. This is Wolfo. I want to call that call. I guess they get Stapleton or Winecki. It was a touch foul, and it was called on Winnecke. Swick, you'll see the overload. We talked about what you have to do against pressure, and of course, Curry occupies the postman. Atkinson runs all the way down, and you'll see an opportunity for an open shot. Good ball movement by Temple, well-designed play, and you see Atkinson coming all the way down from the point. Too little, too late. Tim Brandt, Bill Raftery with you. As you look at the field goal percentage, Richmond shooting 46%, Temple 67. Atkinson for Richmond is three for three from three-point range. Five turnovers for the Spiders, only two for the Owls. Offensive rebounds, Richmond has six. Temple has just one. Hey, you don't think Breezewood can light it up? He had 50 points in one high school game. Well, last year against West Virginia, he really struggled, and the Raiders were asking John, you know, he only made three. They happened to lose it to West Virginia. He said if he made one more, would have been tied. Perry with the turnaround, banks it in. Getting it in too easy. And if he made two, they would have won. But the lead is four. They give him the green light. This is Atkinson. Look at the motion down and through. They'll save the offense. Rodney Rice, here's the overload. Well, they are getting a nice block. And the foul is going to be called on Breezewick. A great reaction inside. Uh, you go in there, nothing is easy as the big guys react. CBS Sports coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships from Budapest, Hungary begins Saturday night with a two-hour primetime presentation of the ladies and the men's finals. The women's final features American Debbie Thomas against East Germany's Katarina Witt in a spirited rematch, while the men's final features the Battle of the Brains. Brian's, rather. <laughs> Brian Boitano and Brian Orser. And it was a Battle of the Brains up in Calgary. Beautiful sport. And use it all. Kiss on the free throw. I wouldn't advise it. Dick will take it any way they can make him. So will Winnecke. Not as lucky on the second one. Perry with a rebound. Well, we mentioned their inability to shoot free throws. They do struggle. 62%. 8.21 remaining in the half. Breezewood fires for three. This one goes over everything, and it'll be Richmond ball. One thing about Temple, none of the players look to the bench. They play their game. I mean, it's a, an admirable trait. Eric English comes into the ball game for Richmond. Stapleton sits down. Atkinson still the point guard. There's my old buddy who used to be here with the Nets, Charlie Theok, is the athletic director at Temple. And I feel a little closer to that program through hearing about John Chaney and what he thinks of it. Rodney Rice, he won't hit off the front of the rim. Evans pushes it up for Al. This is Breezewick, down inside. Totally. Big rebound by Rodney Rice. Charlie raves about the discipline and the respect 
that is generated through John Cheney. But Coswell is big in there as well. Look at Wolfman has to go way up high with the rainbow jump hook over top of him because Coswell is 6'11", 220 pounds. They are really finding that hole in the middle. And I think Atkinson's ability to bury a couple has helped. Perry with a spin move, banks it in. Bucket goes, and the foul. Coswell did a good job holding off. Tennessee is expected. Wins big over James Madison, Tennessee, the number one seeded women's team in that region. Rutgers losing to Virginia. And to me, that's a little bit of an upset, although Virginia was spectacular this year out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Louisiana Tech, that's expected. 80 to 60 over Mississippi. We will have the women's championship game for you as Maryland moves on. 81-66 over Ohio State. Big win for the Terrapins. But we will have that championship game for you. That'll be April 3rd, right here on CBS. With a little more enthusiasm on that Maryland program, did you? <laughs> well, Chris Weller does a fine job for the Maryland Terrapins. English now gives it up to Rodney Rice. Uh, Temple has stepped up the zone a little bit. They're not giving that pass. See Coswell step up. That's how they react. So you've got to come back with something else. Rice's face is showing a little frustration right now. He has two points. They're not going to let him out of an easy one. He's one for six from the field. Look at that hustle by Macon. He had gone all the way from the wing down the baseline as the zone dragged him down. Good reaction. Six minutes, 43 seconds remain in the first half. 23-20, Temple. Atkinson loses it out of bounds. One of the foul didn't get it. Well, that was the change now, the penetration. They haven't done that. Look at making quick step, left side, and hits. This is Atkinson. Kratzer, and he's fouled by Boswell, I do believe. Yeah, you're right. And Wolfhawk made the play, though. Kept it alive, and Kratzer, the beneficiary. That's the second personal foul on Boswell. Was Ramon Rivas in foul problems early, and I was reading something in their notes about his mom who lights candles for him. And, and they, he was saying they have a saint in Puerto Rico. Now listen to me. El que madruga Dios le ayuda. And that means the one who rises early, God helps. And that's in reference to the 5.30 practices at the temple every morning. <laughs> that's where the uh, coaches get up that early. He's going to be a coach next year at temple. Because a lot of the Irish guys in the country are just coming in at that time. <laughs> Richmond, one for five at the line now. Brantley has replaced Boswell for Temple. This is Brantley. Breezewick had an ocean, gives it up to Evans. The crowd yells air ball. Richmond won it three seconds. The Owls lead is five. Macon working on Rodney Rice. The man to man. Nice play by nice hands by Kratzer. Got the right call. Now watch Rodney Rice on Macon. He is really tight in the defense. Macon does have six points, but Rice is all over him now. How would you like to play the player of the year, maybe as a freshman or newcomer of the year? Uh, you'd be a little excited. Absolutely. The hands here by Atkinson. Mark Macon named Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan last year. Well, if he's not in a class of his own, it doesn't take long to call roll where he is. Oh, he is a talented performer. Talk about individual ability. Perry. He cleared everybody on that shot. Intriguing how this zone bends and shapes. Here's the overload. This is Rice. One for seven from the field now. Look at this rebound. Brantley strong right out of Wolfhawk's hand. Macon frees up from Rice. Fires. Can't get the roll. Fight for the rebound. And Rodney Rice gets it. 
St. John's guy, your alma mater. Oh, what a beginning. That's probably the first minute of that game, the way those two teams can score. <laughs> Rice to Stapleton. Stapleton dribbles into trouble, lucky to get it back. Nice pass inside to Kratzer, the pump fake and the foul. You will seldom see that. Tim Purry, great at staying down and one of the better or premier shot blockers in the country. He knows it, should have waited. And Perry's first personal. And team foul number six. Relax, man, two shots. Steve Kratzer, 45% free throw shooter, and that one wasn't even close. This is a shot put. You track coaches out there, he doesn't put the other hand on it. And he makes that one. Kratzer down one for four from the line. The lead is four. Road a little bit, huh? Dick Tarrant now in his seventh year at Richmond. Tournament tested. Richmond has won the last three tournaments it's played in. This team was 15 and 14 just a year ago. Now 26 and 6. Four minutes, 10 seconds remain in the half. Man a man. This is Macon. Nice. Oh, Wolfick with big hands. And look at the hustle after it. Love it. Atkinson with the sleep on him. This is Macon now, right side. Stapleton tries to take a charge. Perry, weak side rebound, but the soft shot by Macon. Macon showed some speed to that loose ball there, half court. 27-21, Temple. Are you getting the shots in there now? Wolfhawks missed a couple of those, huh? Made the hook, can't make the jumper. Breezewood shot again, it's Perry inside and he's fouled. Great position, intelligent approach to watching your teammates shoot the ball. Majority of them go long, just seal off and be ready. And of course the rest of the ability doesn't hurt either. Just the smaller guy unable to contest on the weak side, so John Chaney's now taking advantage of the guard having to go down and seal off. There's the foul on Kratzer, that's his second. Perry, 8.7 rebounds as he goes to the line. And he hits the first. Winecki back into the ball game for the Spiders. Tim Perry, 6'9", 200 pounder out of Freehold, New Jersey. Winecki with a rebound. Tim, the other thing with Richmond is they're missing their shots in a softer fashion, so they're not getting the long rebound. It's going, usually Temple's one and done. You shoot it, they'll get it if you miss. Biggest Temple lead of the game, seven. But it really worked on one side. City overload, Winecki popping in. Brantley followed Rice all the way through. This could really confuse you. Winecki inside with left-handed jumper. Good post pass. Good looking little jump hook by Winecki. Sure was. 1-2-2, two, two, bends into a 2-3 or shapes to the offense. Breeze with Evans, nice and this is Macon. Howie Evans, great kick, didn't waste, good snap pass. Rice wants to shoot, instead goes inside the Kratzer and he's That's walking. Reaction inside. Boy, they come back quickly, don't they? Didn't come take long to deadlock that one. I've had a couple of steals by the guards, and they're right there. Richmond really struggling right now. Rice, one for seven from the field. 0 for five and three-point shots. Now, Temple pulls it back out. 
They really stretched the zone, too. Because they practice against this type of set every day, both clubs. Tough shot by Macon, falling away. Perry inside. His shot won't go. Whistle and a foul, and it's going to be called Owenecki. Over the top of Curran Grantley. But again, Curry, just that ability to understand where the shot is going to go off. That's the second foul on Winecki, so Wolf comes into the ball game. Kratzer will sit down. Oh, Stapleton made the steal, stepped on the line. That's the other thing. They value the ball so well, Temple. Nine turnovers a game. I mean, that's incredible, Tim, at the pace that the college game is played. Approaching the one-minute mark in the first half, this is Evans. Spot open against the two break. Boy, Staple didn't get up that time. Just exploded for that rebound. No hurry. Good poise, overload now. Rodney Rice for three. The only thing with that, there's no weak side rebound if he doesn't make it. Temple lead is four. Now Richmond staying back. Tarrant looking for, if it's a miss, everybody to rebound. Now the spotters match up man. And they better check out Tim Perry on a miss. Atkinson's yelling to Tarrant that there's a mismatch. Now they switch up. He was on Breezewood. This is Macon. Oh! Major League! And that'll do it for the first half. So that's the end of the first half with a score. Temple 32 is where we are. Points in the paint, quite a difference. Temple dominating inside, outscoring Richmond 12-4. And Perry, obviously, those weak side rebounds. And the way they handle the basketball tempo, never have a problem in that category. Richmond with seven. Look at the points off those turnovers, too, Billy. Sure that, plus a couple of follow-ups, and uh, you can see why they're, in, they're ahead. Now, the field goal percentage is close, although it started lopsided in favor of Temple. And then one of the most famous alums out of Temple, Bill Cosby. And, uh, Beautiful the touch here. Went over to see Tom Garrick said hello. And young Tom came down as well. Shows a lot of style. We, we had, we had a lot of fun talking of fun. with Bill Cosby before the ball game. We went in to do some work in one of the offices. Didn't get much work done. We sat and listened to the cause for about an hour. Well, I, I was at a restaurant with him, sent them a cigar. Said I got it from Harry Litwack. He came over to the half hour stand up at our table. Of course, uh, having gone to school in Philly, I remember him. And of course, a lot of. My friends were guys that he grew up with. Bill Cosby ate some of the biggest, sloppiest, but best, <laughs> best looking hot dogs I've ever seen. Oh, thank, thank goodness he had a sweatsuit on. We're underway. Second half, Evans with a basketball for Temple. Temple has the 32-26 lead just underway here. We do have some bad news for Duke fans. John Smith's hand is definitely broken. He broke it in the first game. He had 12 points, six for eight shooting in 14 quality minutes tonight against Rhode Island, but John Smith's hand for Duke is in fact broken. That's a real good performance, too. Terrific effort. Sad. It is sad. This is Evans, penetrates, gives it back to Macon. Macon's quick first step. Oh, he is just so good. He's just able to take whatever you give him. Both clubs, as noted, do similar things, except Temple has that higher level of talent. Inside of Kratzer, look at this one, blocked away. Wolfick now rushes it, Breezewood gets the rebound. Can't get the easy ones. No question the Bob Fossey of this team, huh? Howard Evans, oh, he choreographer. Is. Macon's got the hot hand, this one's for three. Stapleton gets it. Better pull up. Numbers aren't there. He does. Rodney Rice for three. 
They have terrific control on it. They will not misuse a break. If they don't have it, they'll peel it back off and start. Well, you made the point. They don't like to run the break, but if it's the opportunity arises, they will take it. Breeze with the three. He just said that Hightower, that's right. Uh, the three-pointer as he ran by. He's very, uh, very stoic, isn't he? Like Breeze That's stoic, but he can shoot. This is Atkinson. Speaking up for three. Played at St. Anthony's for Gus Alfieri. BC and Providence had come, but you may not play. And he chose Richmond because after going to Maine Central for a year. And Evans to Breezewick. He doesn't even hesitate. Stapleton with another big rebound for the Spiders. Change from the bench now. Three. Atkinson looks over to Tarrant, gets the offensive call, and now the Spiders go to their offensive scheme. Atkinson had the three, didn't take it. Rice will. Inside, Wolfer misses the layup. He looks a little bit tentative. Yeah, he does. I, he mentioned he's used to playing bigger guys at the press conference, but uh, he's not able to convert a lot of these opportunities that he normally does. I'm surprised he didn't take it up for the dunk. You put Rivas and Wolfhawk in the three-second lane and you wonder why they don't widen the lane, huh? I haven't seen a three-second ball in the tournament. Not much room for these big kids. <laughs> Little drop into Perry. You see how he warded off with the hand? And they got Rivas with an elbow foul. Unnecessary. John Chaney and Jim Maloney upset. That is three now on yeah. Rivas. Puts him in a hole. Really wasn't necessary, too. Kratzer, look at the touch. There's all the big guys lean on one another. Kratzer goes over to make sure. And was, was, as they ran up the floor, I think they banged one another. Yeah, the elbow was after that as they came back up the floor. 39-32. Rice for three. Wolfick in there. Takes it back up strong. That's one. Again. Now, again. If they get the long rebound, they're able to convert a little bit or run, up, run it down. When they shoot softly, Temple gets the rebound. Doesn't give him a second chance. Make it. Big rebound for Perry. Gets it back to Macon who fires. Doesn't miss two in a row off it, does he? He now has 14 points, Bill. Tim Perry, good effort, too. Look at Wolfick and Rivas down low. And there goes Wolfick down. And that's four on Rivas. Really not using his head right now. He's Boy, what a battle going on down there. He's become this. a hero in Puerto Rico. But a lot of, look at him. He just makes sure. This is a takedown. One, two. Out. Look like sumo wrestlers. <laughs> oh. He will hear a few things. Maybe not now, but at practice tomorrow if they're fortunate enough to get through this one. Let's talk about what that means for Richmond now with three of us with four personals. It's got to be the advantage, don't you think? I mean, they're used to playing with five people, although Coswell has some ability, certainly doesn't play the zone as well as you see. doesn't get out there on that zone. Stapleton was wide open. Oh, another big rebound. This time it's Rodney Rice. 41-34, Temple. We've got 15-24 remaining in the ball game. First Temple, as we noted, only in the Lehigh game when Mark Macon fouled out. They got the middle open again. Wolfick, not a good shot over Coswell. Only one starter has fouled out in one game. And, you know, Rivas with, Rivas with four now presents a problem for John Chaney. Under 15 minutes in this ball game. Good pass. Coswell is fouled by Winecki. A lot of grabbing going on. That's three on Winecki. Good look inside, though. You love your guys to find the big guys down low. The winner of this game moves on to the championship of this region Saturday afternoon against the Duke Blue Devils. And we'll be back. First team. Uh, 
another great one in Michigan and North Carolina. You will see all those games tomorrow here on CBS beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Here at the Meadowlands, it's 41-34 Temple. Breezewick ran in on the shot. Good reaction on the weak side as Bacon took the shot. You know, you don't stand still if you want to contribute to a program. Here he is. He started running, anticipating. And again, the great inside position by Perry enables Breezewick to get the easy one. Good effort. Rodney Rice picks up his second personal foul. Breezewick at the line, and he hits the first one. Breezewick, Breezewick rather, 6'7", 200-pound junior out of Morrisville, Pennsylvania. 84% free throw shooter, and he nails them both. Average of 17 points a game. A trip. 3 34 Billy. Somebody, excuse me, a trip, they're going to need something. Can't afford too many more empty ones or the strong tempo club will put them away. Temple's Ramon Rivas on the bench with four personal fouls. Turnover by the Spiders. This is Evans. <laughs> and Reeswick right away with something for Stapleton. Little comment for Scott. Biggest lead of the game for the Owls. It's 11. They're going to overload now. Side to Kratzer. This is Stapleton. Rodney Rice looks, Stapleton won the set. Now they go to Kratzer, a little sky hook. They really haven't been able to get him in the game much. Man to man. The carrot not waiting. They do a lot of things for making around the post that Breezewick do. They use the low post guys. Pop outs. A little bit of a stack look. This is Evans, top of the key on Atkinson. And he'll fire for three. I'll tell you, they have some answers, don't they? He just stripped his man down, nailed it. All the way up and down the roster. They're loaded. Stapleton penetrates. Oh, has it rejected by Perry. That was actually below him when he, that was way down. He had to underextend, if that's possible. Look at this reaction. Coswell does a good job. And right, he's not at full extension. Perry has four blocks in this ball game as Eric English comes back in. Atkinson fires at the top of the tree. He he averaged, back. To be averaged about 3.5 a game, so he's right there. Rice for three. Those of you who missed it, missed a good one. Duke wins it by one. Rebounding was the big difference there. You saw those numbers. And in the Southeast region semifinal, Villanova moves past Kentucky 80-74. Woodland moves inside, and he scores. One of the few times the zone didn't react. Did not communicate. Good job by Kratzer, forced Perry away. The nice third play. turnover for Temple. Knocked Tough. out of bounds by English. Tough gamble. Down 10. One of the few trips on a break that Atkinson doesn't make the correct judgment. Richmond stayed close most of the first half, led by Wolfick's 8.7 rebounds. Atkinson hit three three-point shots, but Temple started to pull away near the end of the half. Perry and Macon combined for 19 points. 32-26 Temple at the half, and they pretty much dominated here in the second half. They now lead by 10 with 12.04 remaining. Good job inside post defense by Kratzer and Wolfhawk. Look at Macon. That's pure ability. It's interesting how clubs will clear out the top of the key. It used to be on the side to get a guy free. He'll use the three-second area all the way out. His first step is so quick. Rice for three. Now, Coswell not reacting as well. You mentioned about what would Rivas be now do. He's not getting out quickly to block that corner jumper. Richmond needs those three-pointers. They need Rodney Rice to get hot right now. 
point out lead. Again, it's Macon. And he's fouled by Rodney Rice. Good denial by Eric English all the way out. Now that's going to hurt you. They're 32% against Temple because they usually seal off, grab the rebound, and then you pay for it at the other end. Well, that's what I say. They've got to get hot. They need it badly. They can't stay this far behind Temple and expect to make a run near the end. Rodney Rice picks up his third personal, and Macon will go to the line. Speaking of hot sand sweater, the building's hot. It's hot outside. And Macon hits that one. 78% free throw shooter, averages 21 points a game, six rebounds, three assists. He now has 17 points in this game. Second one short. Look at this, only one guy down, and they're forcing to get a double dribble. But nobody, there wasn't a Temple player other than the shooter. Mark Macon there, and he got the rebound. Virtually impossible. Goes up to the official, smiles at him, <laughs> pats his little butt, and says, good call. That's extraordinary. John does that frequently. Leaves one or takes the ball off. Rice for three. He's got to get on a streak. Yeah, Last touch by Evans, it's Richmond ball. Needs some instant offense. Ten minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the ball game. Thirteen ZS is on the card on the baseline. It must be one of Terrence old Jersey license plates. <laughs> Billy Rodney Rice right now is four for thirteen from the field. Now they're following him through now. Box of one now on Rice. It looks like. What a tip. Boswell with a rebound. It looked good, didn't go in. Kratzer with great pursuit. Uh, either Temple went to a box of one or they followed the wingman through. Breeze with for three. Explosive, aren't they, with those two outside guys? If Richmond didn't feel the pressure before, they have to now. Look at under this 10 pass. minutes. Great look, Eric English. Terrific post pass. And Richard been able to go to the line. Foul on Breezewick. That's his second. This stick went to Fordham. The assistant to Eddie Conlon, an old friend of mine, great NBA player. So he's been around a while. A lot of clinics. I saw him with a bunch of high school coaches here the other day. And they used to work this clinic. They were here to pick up an old check, they said. Hey, you talk about a home homecoming. He used to work with the ushers here, as you mentioned earlier. And they gave him a shirt when he came in yesterday to practice. They said, one, once a member of the staff, always a member of the staff. There's his family all here, too. He didn't walk a lot of tickets. Nine fifty-six remaining. <laughs> to Temple with 9.56 remaining. Temple led by Mark Macon, 17 points. Breezewick has 16. Perry has 11. And they're shooting 52% from the field. And I think more importantly than that, they're playing solid defense, holding Richmond to 38% shooting. And one shot. Now look at that one. Half time. The Sooners. He's got some players. Stacy King. Harvey Grant inside. How about Tubbs earlier this year telling us he wanted to score 90 points in one half? That man, he needs a computer. <laughs> he is some piece of work. Here, 9.45 remains. This is Breeze. He's had the hot Oh! Hand. Not much you can do about that. Right up on him defensively. Able to get it off. Now, there's slides in this box in one. Just like their zone, they help one another. They, Rieswick went down in the three-second area to help. Fowles and Foswell, that's his third. So, Sean Johnson comes in for Temple. Sean Johnson's a big man, 6'7". They've got him listed at 200 pounds. 
He looks bigger than that. Yeah. Well, he doesn't get a lot of minutes, so he may have grown, grown a little bit this season. That's like Reboss. Reboss says he goes on the road and kills him. Too many sweets. I want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Oklahoma-Louisville game at the half. We've got nine minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Temple leads Richmond 57-42. Tim Brant and Bill Raftery with you from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And Temple looks every bit as strong as the number one seed. 38% shooting percentage for Richmond. That's been the difference. And look at Temple, 67% from the field. And front court scoring, of course, to Temple, 32-15. Richmond Wolfhawk with the foul that particular time, but continually getting good shots. And of course, when they're under duress, they're able to create and make the jumper as well. So Temple, uh, very impressive, and no inside game really for Richmond. Here in the East Region, Duke has already advanced. They can turn around, fires, and hits. He now has 19 points. What a show. <laughs> right now, Richmond. Stapleton has the shot. Billy passes it up. Deep trouble. That's a little tentative on the sky hook. Rebound Perry. One and done. The sequence is over. Not able to finish too many trips right now. Earlier tonight, Duke was impressive over Rhode Island, winning by only one, but very strong down the stretch. Very composed as Rhode Island made a run at him. Looks like chalk is prevailing, huh? And that won't deter Breezewood. It doesn't bother him that he missed that one. He'll come back, take another. Not the least big concern. This game was close for most of the first half. Peter Wolfwick had eight points, seven rebounds for Richmond. Ken Atkinson hit three three-pointers. But then Temple went on a run and led 32-26 at the half. This is Stapleton. His shot not close. Rebound Johnson. And he loses it out of bounds. It'll be spider ball. Really, an outside game is all they're getting. A long jump if it doesn't go in. Sayonara. Derek Brantley comes in for Temple. Johnson will sit down. Well, I'll guarantee you Johnson weighs more than 200 pounds. <laughs> He's in your league. <laughs> He's in my league. That's the heavyweight division. That's Breezewood. Coming unraveled right now. Double tick. Good idea, poor execution. Yeah. He was going after Macon. And John Chaney not losing his energy, is he? He's upset at that play. He doesn't like any nonsense. This is why they're a good team. Now Temple has only five turnovers in the ball game. Richmond has ten, and yet it's John Chaney who's off the bench. The defensive personally when they make a mistake like that. He's very sound. Wolford fouled by Evans. It's been well documented that John Chaney gets his players up early in the morning, has practices before class. He wants their minds fresh, and I think even more importantly, he wants the players to know they have that early practice so they go to bed early at night. <laughs> that will get their attention in that area. Villanova moved past Kentucky, 80-74 earlier this evening. Stapleton, fall away jumper. 44 with 713 remaining. Boy, look at that. Not, does that knock you out? That tells a story. Well, it, it's amazing. All the shots are with somebody in their face or forcing you to take a bad shot. Look how hard making works to free up. Great at looking at you. It's trippy. Look at all the little crossover moves. Spin and a lefty. Oh! Yeah, you know, I don't know about that foul. Listen to John Chaney. Stand and take it. So what are you all doing all that stuff for? Just stand and take it. Play fundamentally sound basketball. And they do. Rodney Rice was called for the foul. That's his fourth. A little double for Griswick. 6.45 remaining in the ballgame. No sense sitting Rice down with four. Now, Lincoln's a pretty good post-up player, too. They haven't given him the ball down in there. Now, Richmond goes. Now they switch it back to the man-to-man. -man. Oh, my God. 
No, zone. One, two, two. Shot clock at 15. Inside 10. And Macon goes to work. Oh, oh my goodness. Kratzer with the block and is called with a foul. Macon, quite an answer when you think of it. You're worried about the shot winding down. You give it to him. He ends up scoring or getting to the foul line. And Macon, much of the reason for that is they really have done a terrific job. Now Rice will sit down on the Richmond bench with four personals. And Benji Taylor comes into the game. Macon, 19 points, three assists, two steals. And he's one for two from the line tonight. He'll be 19 years old in three weeks. Named Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan last year. Hits the second one. Ramon, really not much of a factor at all tonight. Rivas saddled with fouls. And they didn't know if they had any depth, but they got some good play off the bench. Rivas sat down with 15.57 remaining in the ballgame. And he's remained there. We're down to 5.55. Brantley gave him some good minutes in the first half. Nothing spectacular, but sound. Stapleton on the baseline gets it back out to Atkinson. Atkinson in a whole lot of trouble. Watch this. Here comes Evans. Gives it up to Brantley. Oh, and he knew who to give it to. Evans, nine assists this evening. This is Atkinson for three. Point eight assists a game, right on the money with nine. He's the boss. Cheney was talking about Evans the other day. The focus and read on what the other team is doing is decided by Evans, and Macon finishes most of those decisions off. Twenty-two points now for the freshman. Stapleton says, help me. Oh, not a good one. A pass off the dribble with the right hand by lefty. 12 turnovers now for the Spiders. Questionable. Dick Tarrant can feel this one just slipping away. Making. Pure. Not much he can do. 24 points now for Macon, and he's putting on quite a show. All the defenses, not much it can do is they get Brantley in there with Kratzer banging it. They give it to number 24. Brantley caught an elbow from Kratzer. Now they have some words. Hey, Rodney Rice will come back into the ball game. He has four personal fouls. There's no use sitting out now with 4.07 remaining. And Temple leads 66-47. The happenings here at the Meadowlands. Temple has played almost perfect in the second half. 13 of 19 from the field, 68%, only three turnovers. Holding Richmond to 34% shooting now. This is Atkinson, top of the key. Taylor's shot off the back of the rim. Perry gets the rebound, hands it off to Evans, and now they'll just melt that clock. Of course, the expectations of Dick Tarrant were the big guys would play as they did against Indiana and Georgia Tech, and they really haven't. They haven't had a solid game on both ends. Interesting team in that they just barely got out of the conference beating George Mason. And then, of course, with the big win over Indiana and Georgia Tech. Some of our viewers will be leaving us momentarily to see another game of special interest in local areas. We'll keep you up to date on the progress of this game with scoring updates and highlights as you see Oklahoma and Louisville.
15 turnovers for Richmond now. And Temple brings it back up with 2.55 remaining in the ball game. And there's the story on those turnovers. But the Tyrant not expecting to do the bad things with the basketball that they did, I guess, to get uh, in this situation. But all the shooting is the question mark. You know, they just didn't shoot well and didn't establish any strength low. Richmond came into this ball game as the lowest seed remaining in the tournament. And now it looks as if they will head back home to Virginia. Well, that shot wasn't even close. Here comes Atkinson. Good step up there by Macon. Stop the dribble. Atkinson gets killed. He gets sandwiched. And the foul will be on Macon. And Macon smiles. He got a little bit out of control. Don't forget, tomorrow night on CBS, regional semifinal doubleheader continues. Michigan against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. And Vanderbilt, of course, will play Kansas. That's all 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then Kansas State against Purdue. The Boilermakers, the number one seed in that region. Iowa and Arizona out west, and that should be a great one. Iowa won big against UNLV. Arizona won big last weekend. Say who's the surprise in the way Kansas, how they bounce back. You know, they struggling during the course of January and early February and all of a sudden Larry Brown's got that club perking. Road to the Final Four continues here on CBS. It's fun, isn't it? Oh. Can't think of a better time of the year. Great month. And of course for the players that get into this, it's such an exciting period. And of course the letdown is just as great. Oklahoma leading Louisville 59-51. Duke won today by one over Rhode Island. Villanova 80-74 over Kentucky, so the Wildcats advance. Raleigh Massimino doing his magic at tournament time once again. This is Macon. Go milk it down some more. Big rebound for Brantley. Shot clock resets at 45. Because this is a, uh, believe it or not, a very gracious act, I think. Game clock at 120. Not trying to score, although they're working, I'm sure, on their delay game as well, but... Uh, They've got the game one. 19 point lead, no question about the outcome of the game. It'll be Temple and Duke, and who do you like in that game? Well, what am I, the handicapper? Sure. I, I think it's gonna be, defensively, an extraordinary difference in the approach to the game. You know, the, the zone concept, and of course, Duke with that heavy, aggressive man-to-man -man is Evans deep three. That's an NBA three-pointer. Home run, as they say. He gave himself plenty of space. And I think John Smith's going to hurt too, not being able to play. No question about that. That's a good point. John Smith broke his hand tonight for Duke. Danny Ferry's going to have to shoot the ball and be more of a factor. Danny Ferry has been in a shooting slump. John Smith, 12.6 for eight shooting, 14 quality minutes before he broke his hand. But the story here is Temple. And it looks as if the Owls, the number one seed in the East, will move on against the Blue Devils of Duke. Under 20 seconds now remaining in this ball game. Good performance by Temple, a real solid defensive rebounding was excellent. One shot, and of course, Richmond then forced to the deep game without any inside strength. And congratulations to Dick Tarrant for a job well done. Temple moves on, beating Richmond 69-47, the Cinderella.